morning, and welcome to Beware of Spoilers. I am Adam. I am very tired. Um, so, as always, if you want to support the show, you can go to multipleworldproductions.com slash preorders. Link is in the description as well. And you can go there, and you can um, pre-order Echo Delta Part 2 which goes live next Friday, on Black Friday. As is always the case, actually only for the next year. Next year we're we're stopping the Black Friday release. I think we're switching to three three releases a year on this. So Black Friday will be the end. We won't be doing Black Friday anymore. uh, Because we're going to be doing April, August, and December. Um, So end of an era. And, And I think it's fitting, too, that next year will be the last year we do Black Friday because it'll be... 10 years we've been doing Black Friday releases at that point. Um, not annual, but if there was going to be a release, there was going to be on Black Friday. There was going to be something on Black Friday that year. Um, but, uh, yeah. Um, for those of you who are curious, um, I'm going to talk about a documentary today. Not a ton to talk about with it, but I figure I'll, you know, put in a little something about uh, Prelude, because I haven't updated anyone on that for a little bit. Prelude Part 1, the short film we're going to make. Um, the, the issue I have with Prelude Part 1 is I did get notes back on the script, and the script is great according to the person who gave me notes, and it's not, I gave it to my mom, and my mom was like, this is great, go do it, and it's like, no, it wasn't, you know, or someone else who would be like, holy crap, like, you know, you, like, no, this was an actual person who, um, was read script, so I, I, I paid a little fee and had someone read it, um, just because I want, I want to make this work, um, so, submitted it, and for those of you who don't know what it is, it's, it's basically you have this guy who, you know, we have a support group, and it, it's all characters we've seen before, it's Helen, it's Victoria, it's Candace, it's Scott, and there's one new guy, Joseph, and it's a support group, for people who got powers, um, and you know, are trying to cope with the new change in their reality as a result of having these extraordinary abilities. And some of them have the powers, and some of them, you know, like them. Some of them have to deal with it in other ways. And it's all about just dealing with the various things that go into uh, superheroics. Um, it's part of a larger anthology. Like, there, there's enough material, not specifically in this support group. Um, the support group is one part of the anthology, but there are other ones too. There's a, there's a part with, um, what's it called? There's a part that, uh, with, with Christine and Kristen, um, having a conversation in jail. There's a bit about, um, uh, the other members of Christopher's team, um, who are going on a little bit of a, uh, like an excursion to, uh, to clear their heads there is, um, Stephen and Rochelle going out to, um, what's it called? Um, to go, going out to, uh, you know, like, on patrol for the night. The entire conceit of it is it's the day before a, uh, a major universe-ending cataclysm, um, which, you know, the kind of thing you would see in a Justice League movie, an Avengers movie, or something like that. It's the day before that. What are all the heroes doing? the day before that, um, and it's kind of this thing that's meant to look at that, so, it's pretty low budget, um, but the, one of the notes I got back was, it's gotta look more cinematic, because just shooting a conversation with five people in a room is not visually engaging, and I agree with that. And I think the problem is, like, there are two points in it where there are things you could back out of the story to do. However, I, I feel like the issue becomes um, figuring out how to visualize it. Maybe, maybe animation, but I don't, I don't have the animation ability to, to do that. I must have, you know, working through it out loud, maybe animation. But the thing is, too, it's like... The one thing that I'm, I'm looking at with this, and I, I think that the idea that visualizing some of these moments, like the moment, like we, we really dive into why Scott is the way he is, um, the, the kind 
uh, sarcastic prick that he is in in, in, in the books. Um, like we, we dive into that a little bit, um, and and we also dive into um, the deaths of two characters who have never been introduced or mentioned up until this point. But you know, I really like their story that I came up with. But I, I want to find a way to use it more urgently. So whatever. Um, and, and Candace tells that story and maybe maybe visualizing those two stories um, with like comic art could work but I feel like doing any of that takes away from it and I look to the Falcon and the Winter Soldier as kind of the reason why I don't think that would work like I think that if, if you've watched Falcon and the Winter Soldier, there's that scene that I I, I, I gave a very sloppy blowjob to in episode 5, I think it was, where um, it's just Isaiah telling his story to Sam. And instead of it being a flashback where they cast a young version of Carl Lumley and he's he, and, and visually showing us what's going on, it's just him telling his story. And if they cut away to visually show what was going on, um, I, I don't think that it would have looked nearly as, as good. Like, cause it, it takes away from the story if it's like, and now we're going to see this, which is kind of the same thing we saw in, and that's the point is I'm not taking it away from it. It's like the entire point of that scene is, uh, Isaiah does the exact same thing that Steve does. Isaiah gets thrown in prison. Steve gets hailed as a hero and becomes an Avenger. And it, it's an interesting, it's an interesting look um, that that they did it that way. Um, and rather than change it, like I, I feel like it's a, it's a better, like I feel like you know doing it with just the dialogue is better than you know for emotional impact um, than than showing it in a in like a flashback. Because um, when you when you show it in a flashback, you're kind of building too much um, imagery around it that's going to distract from the emotional impact of of the guy telling the story, um, which is what the scene's all about. It's about the guy telling the story and and his emotional impact um, of having gone through it. Um, and I think that that's kind of why I'm, I'm hesitant to do that that and it would blow the budget up um and I don't have any artistic ability so it's not like I can just go like okay well I'll draw it or I'll animate it um and it's a pretty big endeavor I don't want to foist it upon Josie who has enough shit going on she doesn't need to also animate uh, a segment for a short um because live action is out of the question for the sequences. I mean, they're, they're pretty big, big budget visuals um, for those two sequences. Um, but I think that if it were to be done like a comic, um, that that would be cool. Where it's like we don't need to see hard motion; we just kind of do it like like a comic book. Yeah, that could that could work. Um, I don't know. You're, you're just listening to me, you know, work things out in real time. Anyway, um, this week's movie, well, this week, I think it finally came to Disney Plus, or at least I guess noticed it on Disney Plus, uh, Fires of Love, um, the, the documentary that got a lot of attention out of Sundance and got acquired by National Geographic, which means it was going to end up on Disney Plus eventually. Well, it's now on Disney Plus. Um, Fires of Love is the story of these two volcanologists who died doing what they loved, which was investigating volcanoes, um, and it's using entirely archival footage to tell the story of both them and their personal story, but also the story, like, it also teaches you about volcanoes. Not as much. It's more about the people, but there's still enough in there to kind of give you some, some background cursor information about volcanoes and how they work. Um, I think it's pretty well done. It was a pretty interesting documentary. Um, I did not know these two people existed or that they died uh, investigating volcanoes or that, um, you know, like, like everything they talked about vol 
talk, you know, some different types, and, and like, I really like the, um, the point where they talk about, like, you know, how many different types of volcanoes are there, and, um, the, the guy, I forgot his name, who's, you know, the main guy in the documentary, he, he talks about how, like, you know, when we, it, it's the old way of doing things, is to categorize everything, to take, make these little boxes and say, this belongs here, this belongs here, this belongs here. When the, that's not exactly reflective of reality at this amount of the time. Um, reality, you know, these volcanoes can vary greatly in what they do, how they act, uh, what they, what, and, and all of that. Um, and it is kind of an interesting thing to think about, where it's like, when we look at a lot of, you know, science now, it seems like we are moving away from the characterizing in traditional ways with, with new characterizations, um, and new, or classifications, I guess is the better word, um, new classifications coming, you know, on almost a daily basis, um, and new ways to, to, to put things into groups, so that way we don't have to, uh, have the same traditional way of looking at it, and it's not just to shake it up for, shake, wait, for the sake of shaking things up, but it's to make it more accurate and, and, um, to reality when it comes to how these things are actually different or similar. Um, I think that's kind of the problem, is that, you know, when you, when you talk about it that way, they do a lot of, there's, there's a lot of great information in this documentary, um, and I understand why, you know, uh, Natural Geographic, Geographic was so quick to pick it up, um, what else was there? It, it is mostly their own footage, and I think that that's something else that's really interesting, too. You don't normally see that, because usually you have, like, uh, a mixture of, like, oh, well, here's the archival footage, here is, um, here's footage that was, uh, you know, done. I mean, there is some archival footage, but it all kind of fits together and looks kind of the same, um, in a way that makes it feel like it's all kind of one cohesive story instead of multiple um, what's called multiple longer stories, um, which I, 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 I know sounds like I'm just, you know, talking, but it, it makes sense when you watch it, um, it is one of the best documentaries I've seen this year, um, I wouldn't say it's better than Who We Are, um, but Who We Are was very informative and very interesting, um, and, uh, yeah, I, I feel like there's a, um, it's worth, you know, it's worth a watch if you have any interest in, in not just nature, but the people who go out and, 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 and try to learn about nature, um, and try to expand on, you know, expand what we know about nature and the world around us, and, and it is, you know, it is the human, the, you know, the humanization, I mean, and I hate saying the humanization, because it's not to imply that either people were ever dehumanized, but there is this idea that, like, we look at scientists, to an extent, once we get far enough out, the same way we look at pop culture icons and other mythical figures, where they're kind of, you know, like, I don't want to say asexual beings, because that has a, a different connotation, but, like, kind of like automatons that are designed to do their purpose and then fuck off and not, you know, and, and disappear into the sunset once they've done what they're there to do. We don't talk about their personal lives. We don't talk about, you know, what they what they do when they're not sciencing. It's just here's what they here's the science that they're doing, um, and yeah, I, I guess think it's interesting um, and uh, to sit here and explore it and not just explore the the science behind it because there was a way to do like here are these two people, here's what they discovered, it is very much the story of them, and their, their romance, uh, and how that romance shaped the way they did research, and, and what they did in terms of research, um, it is a, it is a really great, um, what's it called, you know, really great, um, documentary in that regard, um, so, uh, so yeah, so, I think we'll wrap up there for today. Um, I may see the Banshees of Inisherin this week. 
I, I say I might because we're getting into Oscar season. And for whatever reason, and, and I've said this before, I've expressed this issue before. The theater I usually go to um, has, has been doing renovations for about six months now. It seems like they're no closer to completion than they were when they closed down a bunch of screens. Um, be that as it may, the the theater is currently fucked up. Um, as a result, they're only showing big releases, and because Black Panther just came out, and because Black Panther is two hours and forty minutes, and then when you attack on trailers, um, it gets to like three oh five. Um, not like the entertainer, they didn't cut it down to 305, but anyway, um, so you got that, and th- and that is leading to the situation where, okay, this, th- like, that's taking up three screens out of six, and then you have, they're still playing Black Adam, and I think Smile is still in theater, maybe Pray for the Devil, but either way, you have all of these movies that are still in theaters, they're not gonna take them out to show a run of The Fablemans, they're not gonna take it out to show a run of, um, what was the other one? Um, not the Fablemans. Um, Banshee's of Inisherin, which is um, the one I, I want to see tomorrow. Um, they may pull some, like pull a screen to do the menu. They may pull a screen to do maybe, and I'm and, and this is, you know, a big maybe. They might pull a screen to do um, that other one. Um, she said, which I already reviewed. If you want to check that out, it's already up on the feed. Um, like, they may do that, but they're not gonna do it for, you know, like, they're not gonna do it for just anything, I think. Uh, and I think that that leaves me having to go to another theater, um, to see smaller releases, which is why you've noticed, you've probably noticed I've done less smaller releases lately. Um, or, or more, you know independent or Oscar buzzy movies, um, even though I would have done a bunch by now, and that's entirely because my AMC is gutted and has been gutted for months, and I don't understand why it's not done yet, um, and I don't want to be the, the, the guy who emails again, because I emailed after three months, and I was like, what the fuck, and they were like, it'll be done soon, and that was another three months ago, so, either way, um, I say all of this because the decision is going to be dictated by Showcase um, and, and, and how Showcase decides to run, you know, when they, what their schedule is going to be for tomorrow, which as of this morning, they still have not put up the, the schedule for movies that are playing in the theater tomorrow. Um, it's annoying, but I, I can't control that. Um, so... Yeah, and it's so dumb too. Why the fuck are you not putting up the one day, Wednesday schedule on Monday? Um, but whatever. Um, hopefully they're still playing the Banshees of Inisherin tomorrow, um, so I can go see it tomorrow. I have something after work today. I can't go today. Um, doctor's appointment. But you know, otherwise I would. Um, but whatever. I, I, I just don't. I don't understand. Um, Anyway, um, yeah, so, maybe the Banshee of an insurance, um, possibly the menu this weekend, um, I'm up in the air about that, only because, um, the 18th, I have to, uh, I'm picking up my copy of Violet, and I kind of want to get through Violet as quickly as possible, um. So that way I can do a review of it. Um, so, and then Saturday all day I'm doing shit. So we'll probably have a review of Pokemon Violet the week after for Thanksgiving week. Um, and that'll be, you know, that'll be the big thing. Um, hopefully we'll have it done by then. Um, again, no guarantees. But, because it's gonna depend, I don't know how long the game is. I've been trying to stay clear of leaks as much as possible. Um, so, I know information has been leaking out, because I see the news stories about, like, the entire Pokédex leaked, and, you know, all this shit, and I'm like, alright, cool, but I'm trying to stay clean of that, um, going into it, and, um, so far, so good, 
Um, but I don't know how long the game actually is. Um, so it could lead to some issues. Um, I'm going to do a full Sonic Frontiers review maybe tonight. Um, now that I've played through the game a little further. Um, yeah, I, I finished the, uh, what's it called? I finished the game at this point. I'm not thrilled. But we'll talk about that probably maybe tonight. I, I'm, I'm, on, I'm on the fence about that. But we'll wrap up there for today. And until our next episode, which will be uh, Sonic Frontiers tonight, have a great rest of your week.